Hey YouTube, how is it going? I hope all is well. Today we're going to kind of just follow up on where we left off on the on from the last episode. Now, why did I do that last episode uh, in the order that I did? Because it's not in the order of importance. More or less, the reason I did that episode in that order was because I wanted to... I know that eventually you're going to come to a point where you're either going to order parts or you're going to order a kit... And you're going to sit there and wonder about the quality of the components in that kit and how it's going to make your amp sound. I wanted to ease your mind in that it's not going to matter that much. Uh, whether you go with generic or the highest dollar parts you can find, the amp is going to sound relatively the same in either instance. It's just going to be a difference in cost. So the only major difference is going to be the cost. That's really it when it comes to ordering up the parts. Now, that's not to say that it won't sound different. It will sound itty bitty 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 different. There's videos online, um, YouTube, uh, yada yada yada, that show the different, uh, you know, the difference between Sozos and generics and the Jupiters and yada, yada, all kinds of them on there. Check them out. You'll be surprised to know that they really do not actually change in sound all that much. Um, there's not as many videos that show amps made entirely with carbon composition versus metal film or something like that. Um, obviously there is a difference in sound, but, uh, it's again, to, to reiterate, it's not going to be one extreme to another. It's not going to be night and day. There will be a difference, but it's not going to take a crappy sounding amp and turning it in and turn it into God's gift of amplifiers and vice versa. Nothing, it's just not going to happen. So that's why I loaded you up with that one first was so that way I could get that one out of the way because I don't want you to sit there and go, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to, it doesn't matter. Just pick one and go with it. You're going to be okay. So let's get some of the basics down of what these two things do in a circuit and how they interact. Uh, I'm going to start with the capacitor real quick because this one's probably one of the more un misunderstood elements in an amplifier. Um, there are two different types, there are two major different types of capacitors. There's polarized and non-polarized. So the polarized ones are the ones that have that little negative stripe on one side and they have the little dimple on it, you know, the little rib. Those ones are that way because in order to have the amount of capacitance that they have, they need to be polarized. Otherwise, they would go boom. We don't like things to go splody splody. So those ones, we must connect in the orientation that is appropriate for them in order for them to work. Now, these guys here, the non-polarized versions, they don't have a direction. They are, in essence, DC blind or AC blind, whatever. It's not, they're not AC blind. They pass AC. But they don't care about what orientation that you put them in. So you're probably wondering what the hell that line means then. If you don't know... Stick with me. If you do, then you, you, you've you obviously heard. But some capacitors don't come with a line. Some do. The ones that come with it have just done you a favor. That's all they've done. But what does that line mean? That line is telling you that this particular lead here is connected to the outside of the foil. So if you can imagine, this guy here is just a thin wrap of metalized plastic that's wound up, so they wind it up until they get into this. And when they're done winding it, whatever side is connected to the outside is the one that, you know, the outside, the end of the wrap, if you will, is connected to this lead. And the inside one, the one that started the wrap, is connected to the other lead. That's all they're telling you with that. Now, what's the purpose of that? Well, apparently, when you connect this lead, the one that's outside, to the one that's closest to ground, relative ground. I'm going to call it relative ground. We'll get into this more in a minute. But if you connect it to the lowest relative ground, it will be quieter. So you have to imagine this thing is just a really, really long wire that's been compacted into this little space right here. That's more or less what a capacitor is, right? So it's kind of like a, an antenna, if you will. So depending on which orientation this thing is done, it is just more prone to picking up noise. Well, having the outside foil connected to 
whatever's closest to ground or relative ground, I'm going to call it, it will be quieter. So if your capacitor does not have a line on it, let's say you get one of the generic ones and it doesn't come with a line, in order to find which side is the outside foil, go ahead, turn on your amplifier, plug in a guitar cable, and then connect one lead or the other to the tip of your guitar cable. And then you hold your capacitor right there. It's going to make noise. It's going to either buzz or it's not. Whatever side is quietest, so whatever lead is quietest when you connect it to the tip of your guitar cable, is the outside foil. That is the one that you want to make sure goes to the closest relative point to ground. Now, let's preface, preface a couple things and then, so we can understand. Now, the HT power supply in your amplifier is essentially two grounds. <laughs> and don't take that literally. I'm not saying that they are both actually ground, but we're going to call them relative. So to this, it's separated by one or the other more so. So what I mean by that is uh, I'll use physical point in space, but this is HT up here and this is ground down here. So let's say resistance wise, it's this close to your positive rail and that far away in resistance from ground. You would want that line, that line there, if I could get it to stand still, you'd want that line then to connect to whatever is going to be closest to your positive HT rail. Conversely, let's say it's down here. Again, I'm using physical only to denote the amount of resistance between the two points. So this is relative, okay? So let's say the amount of resistance from here to ground is lower than the amount of resistance from here to your HT rail. Then you would connect that line, that line on this capacitor to whatever connects down here. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one is positive or negative. That's irrelevant. We want relative point. So as far as this thing's concerned, HT, your positive voltage up here, is just as good as ground as ground is to it and only to it. So whatever has the least amount of resistance between whatever point, connect it to it. Okay. So in a tone control pot, let's say, for instance, um, it might, you know, depending on where it's at in the tone circuit, it might only be separated to ground by, you know, a 25K pot. Well, it still has to go through uh, uh, the, uh, the, lo uh, the load, excuse me, the, uh, <laughs> the, the slope resistor, which is 33K. And then it's got to go through an air gap to get to the plate of the previous stage. Now, what I mean by air gap, or not air gap, but um, it goes through the plate of the tube and then the you know it's got 100K that's going to the HT rail, right? So now you've got 133 plus the natural resistance of the tube itself to get just to this guy here where instead of the 25K to go through the pot that gets it to ground. That's why you would plug this in, this wire, <laughs> wire, this line would have this lead going to ground. Conversely, if it were coming off the plate of the tube, this is now a coupling cap at this point, you've only got 100K up here, but let's say this is a 470K grid leak right here. 470K is a heck of a lot further away from ground than this guy is to the HT. So as far as this guy is concerned, HT is its closest relative ground. So you would then connect whatever outside foil is, this lead here, to go to there. I hope that answers that question. It's probably not as complicated as I made it sound, but it's that's just the way that it's, it's easy to explain how to look at it as. All right. So there's another aspect that these things create in conjunction with each other. So... You probably see them like this all the time. You've got your tube here. You've got your plate resistor up there. You've got this. This is now turned into your coupling capacitor. In almost all instances, it's going... Well, I'm not saying almost all. In all instances, it's going to have some sort of a grid leak or reference to ground 
connected on the other side of that capacitor. This orientation here creates a high pass filter. So that is to say that it cuts lows. So it's also a low cut filter if you want to look at it like that. This orientation here, the value of these two parts determine the corner frequency of this filter network. So this creates an RC filter or a CR filter in this instance here. But the RC network that this creates determines the corner frequency. The corner frequency is the point at which it starts to cut frequencies or cut volume of, you know, the frequencies. Conversely, in this orientation here. So let's say we've got like a volume pot here. That's kind of what this one's you know, uh, or something else. Like this is another resistor here that is determining how much goes towards ground. So this is ground down here, but you will see it like this. So in this orientation here, we have a low pass filter, or if you want to look at it another way, a high cut filter. So this network creates a high cut or low pass filter. Again, same rules apply. The value of these two parts dictate the uh, amount of, you know, the corner frequency at which things start to cut. Now, a good general rule of thumb to kind of figure out what's going to happen with at least the capacitor is the larger the capacitor, the more base you will keep and the more highs you will cut, depending on which orientation again. So in this orientation here... This is, again, a high pass filter, if you will. The larger that value is, the more lows you will keep. In this orientation here, the larger this is, the more highs you will cut. So if you want to cut less highs in this orientation, you would go with a smaller value. So you can go into the PFs if you want to retain more high frequency. Um, a common value for something like this, for like a high cut type circuit, would be uh, 0 0.0047 uh, UF, that is. Um, so again, that would keep most all of the, the high, uh, the mids, excuse me, and a good portion of the highs, but it would just get rid of the really high top end. Or if you want to make it darker sounding, or darker sooner, or nah, just darker, it's going to be darker and muddier, you go with a higher value, like say 0 0.022, and it will cut down into the mids, so as you roll down that tone control, it really gets really dark really quick. Kind of imagine like how your your tone control works on your guitar. Um, if you use a point oh four, if you use a point oh four seven, it gets a really dark tone really really quick. That's why there's a different value that come into um, in, in in typical use for Stratocasters and you know, like Les Pauls, for instance. So. In this orientation here, again, just to kind of clarify and reiterate it a, a little bit, the larger the value, the more lows you will have. The smaller value you go, the less lows you will have. Typical values in this position, I would say a good safe one to go with, to start with, if you don't know which one you want to have, is 0.022. 0.022 is either going to be too bassy or not bassy enough. I can almost guarantee you it's going to be right on the edge of too bassy. Um, so if you want less lows, then you would then go lower in value. So 0.022, you go down to 0 0.01 or 0 0.0047 or 500 PF. So imagine some boxes use a 500 PF coupling capacitor. That's how, that's why they're so, uh, I don't want to say brittle, but you know why they're so bright in comparison. They don't have a lot of bass in them. Um, but in their um, their normal channel on some of their different the Vox AC30 designs, some of them have a 0.047 coupling capacitor, so all the base. Somebody said I want the base, and somebody said yes, and uh, that's how that works. So that's one way to kind of think of it in terms of what that value is doing in those two different orientations. All right, so I hope that kind of loads you up a little bit. I'm not trying to get too deep into the math. You just kind of need to understand a couple of the different aspects. So get brushed up on your uh, Ohm's Law stuff. 
because you're going to need to know that later on when we get into designing the power amp section of the amplifier. This guy will become more important then. There's a reason why there's a big white brick, and there's a reason why these little guys are in there. Otherwise, it's just more a matter of taste. So it's important to know if you're going to have the right value, and then you can also determine based on known, you know, known uh, values what size resistor you need to go with to get a you know desired result. In terms of the capacitors, um, again, there's two different types. There's polarized and non-polarized. Uh, the polarized ones need to be used in the power section. Um, and the only reason why is because in order to have that level of capacitance, they need to be polarized. That's all there is to it. You wire them in backwards, they go boom. We don't like that. These guys here, not much to them. We can wire them in either direction. Uh, you can put them anywhere in the amp at will too. Uh, you can use these in the power section if you want. These don't mind where they're at. But the way that they work is that they block DC. And blocking DC is important because it makes sure that your amplifier works correctly, especially when they are used as coupling capacitors. That is what the role of the coupling capacitor is, is to keep DC off of the grids of your tubes so that way they operate like they're supposed to. Secondarily, it's not as big a deal as they make it out to be, although it is kind of important if you want to keep the noise floor low. And by noise floor, I mean buzz. That line represents the outside foil. The outside foil should be connected to the closest relative ground. Relative ground in our amplifier can either be HT, so the positive voltage, or ground. Whichever one it's closest to, relatively speaking, via resistance, so whatever its path to lowest resistance is, that's the side that you want to connect that lead to. So it can be the positive side or it can be the negative side, doesn't matter. And then finally, the orientation in which these two are, you know, placed in determines the knee, the corner frequency, at which it starts to cut off frequencies, either high cut or low cut, high pass, low pass, if you will. And that is, this is a high pass, low cut filter, whereas this is a low pass, high cut filter. So that's how these things work inside of the amplifier. That's how it changes the tone of your amplifier, because all these things work in your amplifier in this way. So now that we've got that kind of figured out, I think we're going to call it on this particular video and uh, yeah, do your do some uh, do some reading up, look at some more videos on YouTube and we'll come back. We've always got more. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to touch up on next, but uh, I think we're going to start breaking down some schematics and getting an idea of how a tube actually works, which will introduce these guys a little bit deeper so we can really get an idea of where we're going. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.